let's do a little overview and assessment. When we push one of these buttons down, the eight buttons that give it its name, an eight button machine, and we ratchet with a handle that fits onto a little stop there. Of those needles that are in working position, the ones that correspond to the selected buttons should come forward, and it appears that that feature is working correctly. That button should cause them all to release, so that's working correctly. But I'm having to really push hard, and some of the buttons won't stay engaged which indicates that there's probably down in the mechanism down there either dryness and need of lubrication or some fuzz, some crud, some old oil, something like that. So a good cleaning is probably in order. And if I reach in with a tool and push here, which I've already done, that's the channel that holds the sponge bar and it's coming out the other end. See it emerging? I'll pull it on out and we'll have a look. This is what you usually see. It is utterly useless for its intended purpose. There is no cushioning to press the needles down and it's coming apart and it has disintegrated some and some of that disintegrated material will be in this channel. Another reason that we do need to engage in a good deep cleaning. On the plus side, what I'm going to call the tray that holds the sponge, is in good shape. This one's rebuildable, and the sponge that I get from spongebar.com does work on these. Used it before. Also, a Modern brother sponge bar fits, although it is too long. It will stick out here, but when you're not closing the case, it functions all right. And many people, though I'm not really one of them who bothers, but many people faithfully remove their sponge bars when they put the machines away in the belief that it may prolong their lives, and it may do so. Um, so if you're going to do that, then using a modern over-length one isn't a problem, and the fit is fine. I'm fine with the rebuilt sponge bar, but I see two reasons that you might want an authentic one. One if, or an original from the factory one, if your tray's in poor condition and it's rusty it's, and beat up, it's pointless to try to rebuild it. It'll never be great. The second is, if you're a new knitter, occasionally a rebuilt sponge bar is not a success for one reason or another. If you're experienced, you will know that this, the difference between sponge bar problems and other problems but if you're new, you may frustrate yourself no end and have no idea which it is. So the sponge bar presses the needles down. Of course, it's back here in the channel where my finger can't go, but it presses them down. And you may wonder, well, aren't they okay? But without any sponge bar, they sort of stay down. What you may find is that you are okay in stocking it. But the fancier the stitch and the more challenging the yarn, the more issues a sponge bar in poor condition will cause. So I'm in favor of always making sure yours is a good, solid, usable sponge bar. My machine came with a few replacement needles, and there they are. You will notice what oddballs they are. The majority of knitting machine needles have straight shanks. These don't. And they are quite important to the fit in these old eight button machines. As I recall, all the way up through 800, they use needles that are the same. And in many models, I haven't had a chance to check every single one, they are interchangeable. But from 820 on, the needles are completely different and definitely do not interchange. So if you're fortunate enough to have a stash of these, Hang on to them and keep them oiled and safe. Here's the row counter. It matches up over here towards left of center by sitting on those posts and then pushing back into position. This one's working just right. The carriage will do what my thumb is doing when we actually go to use it. 
here are the clamps that come with this machine. Note that they resemble river clamps, but these are the main bed clamps. In actual fact, the machine will function pretty well just sitting on this non-slip shelf lining material. But it was really designed to sit at the slight angle these clamps will put it in, leaning a little bit up and tilted away from us. Not as much as a river clamp really, but somewhat. And it knits even better in that position. Here's a piece of good news. These are what I call the flippers. Each one of them should flip with pep and alacrity back into place when you hand manipulate them because that's what they need to do while knitting. Failure to do what they are doing correctly would mean that either a spring was in bad condition or missing or it was filthy, filthy, dirty, so something impacting the motion or there was rust on a shaft, something like that. Looks like all I have is the normal amounts of dirt and I can clean it off. It doesn't look like anything's worse than that. Plane should cancel all the other buttons. You should be able to push in two part buttons or one and two tuck buttons or one. Yay! We can. These are stiff. They should be firm. These are a little stiffer than they ought to be. And this end is worse. I'm not going to force it. I'm going to do a little cleaning and lubing before I try it because each of these is a distinct position that should behave itself when you select it. I am missing a little bit of the plastic ring here. However, if the stitch dial button rotates and holds definite positions, that's purely a cosmetic issue. We could rebuild it with some kind of resin or just live with it. So it's looking like function is not impacted. I won't know for certain until I get a chance to knit. But I'm not going to stress out over it. It's a character mark. These NT buttons, press forward, press back. They seem to work properly. They don't just pull towards you and away from you. So don't force that. If they do this, they're working right. Good news, there really isn't any rust to speak of. So that's excellent in a candidate for restoration. See that moving the whole console? That's what it's supposed to do. Happy news. Very good. If these did not produce such a result, it would mean the linkage was either disconnected or gummed up down underneath them. So before I demonstrate or even try to knit on this machine, I have a few chores to do. I need to rebuild the sponge bar, and if you need to rebuild one, we do have two other videos on that. One that shows rebuilding just by leaving the clamps in position and using tape where my fingertip is, that works fine. Later, Jack learned to remove the clamps and replace them, these little plastic clips on the end. And you can do that a few times before they give out. So you can watch either of those videos for reference in rebuilding your own sponge bar. Then I want to get the machine out of its case, the case being the turquoise housing with the silver ends, I want to be able to get into the pattern center and down in here and really clean it out. There are a number of ways to clean and I don't know yet which I'm going to choose. I want to look at its condition. Once I get in there, I will share with you what I found in case it helps you.